Hi guys, today we're going to do a little bit of a crossover episode, a bit of cooking on one side and a bit of fishing on the other because this is a catch, cook and eat for bass. Now I love eating these fish but first you need to catch one and the way I usually do that on the surf beaches where I fish because we don't have any rock marks around here is I use a free hook flapper rig and I use three different patterns usually in terms of beads. Now generally I'll only have a one hook on for them and I'll have the green and blacks just like I use for the place. Then another really effective little pattern on the beads for me, very successful with these, are the gold ones, which came off of my little girl's necklace uh, when she broke it, which is quite handy. And then also bringing the baits up in the water, I use these very large 30 mil attractor beads. These are floating beads with a spinner blade. Now this waves around higher up in the water and they pick bass up as well. But if I'm getting picked off by a lot of little fish, then what I'll do is up up my hook sizes, go up to a 4 just like this one and fish it on a much longer running hook line just like this. Now I've also got a little stop knot on here to stop the beads running all the way up to the other end and this is an adjustable one so the beads will stop wherever I pull that knot to just like you can see there. So let's get to a bit of fishing and I'll reel in a couple of bass for you guys. Although bass can give a cracking bite, they don't always put out the best fight. A lot of the time they just follow you in and sometimes you'll feel the occasional thump, thump, thump as they're trying to pull themselves back down. But other than that, these guys come in quite easy. Now it's important to remember, like with all fish you take from the sea, there are minimum take sizes. You can get these from British Sea Fishing. They do go up and down occasionally, so keep up to date with them and never take fish that are undersized. Now this one came in at 36 centimetres, that meant he was a bit undersized so he went back. Now the legal take size when this video was shot was 42 centimetres, so obviously this one didn't hit the plate. When it comes to releasing them, always try and make sure these guys go back in the best of shape. Bass aren't only ever caught at night, I also catch them quite regular in the day as well. Now this one, uh, give me a cracking little bite, but again, just followed the hook in, didn't really put up any fight amongst it. Now the venue where I caught this bass, it was actually quite tricky to actually land fish there because you've got the tide running from left to right, but you've got to try and bring them in over the steps and not over the sea defences because the sea defences unhook fish very quickly. I've tried that and it didn't work. But this bass was 44 centimetres, so I was quite happy to catch it, take it home and have him for me dinner. So first things first, we need to get the scales off of this thing. Now we're going to try and be very thorough and get all of those scales off. And the way I do it is by using the back of a knife, putting it down towards the tail, backwards and forwards a couple of times until I get underneath a couple of scales and then the rest of them come off a bit like what a pack of cards would do if you had them let out on a table and pick the bottom one up and slid it, slid it across to the end one. Once I'm happy I've done a thorough job and got most of them scales off then I'll gut the fish. So all I do for this is stick the knife into the belly right down the centre and then I open them up. Now there is a trickier bit which is between the two fins right up by the head and you just need to get the knife in between them and separate them as you cut as you cut it out. Now the bit I try and avoid doing is cutting straight through the anus itself and that's because if the fish is full of waste that can uh, foul the taste of the meat itself. Now the fish has been gutted and scaled, then what I'll do is take the fillets off. Now I start by making two cuts, one either side of the dorsal fin, and then running them down along the backbone. Now why I do either side is because it's easier when you've got both fillets on to make those initial cuts than to take one off and then start on the next one. Once those first two cuts are in place, then I'll start working on taking the fillets off themselves. Now all I do is I go in just behind where the body cavity would have been and then I cut along the backbone all the way out to the tail initially. Then I come back along myself, start taking that fillet down towards the uh, ribs itself, cut in underneath and then start to tease that fillet away just using the knife to get that meat as close to the bone as I can. I 
use this as one of those jobs. There's no point doing it in a rush. Take your time, do it well, and get the most out of the fish which you've taken from the sea. And finally, when you've got as close to the head as you can, just cut straight through, down into that meat, meet that backbone, and the fillet will drop off for you. And then, just do the same to the other side, and you'll have the two fillets off of that fish with hardly any waste on that backbone at all. Final job in preparing these fillets is to take out the very, very fine pin bones which can run down the centre of that fillet. Now there is a trick to this and the trick is to pull them out the opposite way to the way you think you should. So pull, grab hold of them from the head and then pull them out down towards the tail and they come out easy. Next I'm just going to put them on a plate, put some cling film over them put them in the fridge for a bit before cooking them up later on to eat for me tea. In the bath tonight I've got new potatoes and green beans. Now I'm going to start by just quartering up those new potatoes and then parboiling them before taking them on to the next step. The green beans, these are the frozen ones, but they're pretty good to be fair. These are just going to go in a pan of boiling water. They only take about six minutes to cook through, and then I'll sit them out on the side before I carry on adding to them as well. Now, the potatoes take a bit longer to cook through than the beans do, but once they're both done, then what I'll do is I'll start adding the next stage. So I'll start with the potatoes, because they're going to take longer. What I do is put a good chunk of butter in there, salt, pepper, and then bring them back on to the heat. Now once that butter's melted, I'll mix it in, and then I'll let that butter just start to crisp up, scrape it off the bottom of the pan, and keep mixing that into them potatoes, and they're going to taste lovely. Now I'm going to also do the same with the beans, but I'm not going to let the butter crystallise on the bottom of that pan. After about three to five minutes, you can see the results just there. I'm just going to scrape it off, Keep mixing that in and let them potatoes soak up that flavour. Now once I'm happy with the potatoes and I've done the beans as well, I'll put them both over to the side to let them rest and then I'll break out the pan for frying these sea bass fillets. So first things first, I need to prepare that pan. I need to bring it up to temperature, get it nice and hot, put some oil in there, a bit of butter and again a bit of salt and pepper for these fillets to go into. Now the pan's ready, what I'm going to do is lay that first fillet in there. Now I'm only going to cook these guys one at a time because I don't want to overcrowd my pan. So I'll lay it in, give it a little bit of a move about to stop it sticking to the bottom and then I'll let it cook for a bit to let that skin crisp up. Then to finish that fillet off, what I'm going to do is very gently flip it over and just let the other side cook through and also soak up the flavour from the butter, salt and pepper which is still in that pan. Once it's been cooked on both sides, it's ready to plate up and serve. Now the missus is going to have this one and I'll show you what her meal looked like now. And there you have it, a meal I can be proud of making. And I also enjoyed eating it as well, which is a bonus. Well, thanks for watching all the way to the end. If you've liked this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button down here. Now, if you like your fishing, check out my fishing playlist up top. And if you like cooking, check out my cooking playlist just down below.